This is the Craig Folly Show on 1019 WDET, and we're going to wrap up uh, this day today talking about, uh, you know, some of the natural phenomena here in Michigan. We talk about the power of the lakes and the water. Well, you know, what made those, of course, are some just remarkable geological stories uh, and, and really a unique geological history that we have here in the state. Cranbrook Institute of Science now has a new uh, DVD out called The Geology of Michigan, and I had an opportunity to talk to social science, uh, social, excuse me, science geologist and paleontologist John Zawiski about the new v- DVD that he worked on for this. Had a chance to talk to him a few weeks ago in advance of a screening they were doing, uh, and uh, this is my interview with John Zawiski of Cranbrook. I'm very glad to be here and excited to talk to you. Well, you know, when you talk geology... I mean, let's be honest, most people just assume we're going to have some discussions about rocks uh, and not recognizing really the importance of this science and and also not recognizing just how uh, rich Michigan is when it comes to geologic research. That's exactly right. You know, we live here in southeast Michigan and particularly in our urban setting, we don't necessarily get the full take on it. But you could make an argument that Michigan has had one of the most incredible geological histories of any place on earth. Well, and, and I'm assuming that a lot of that has to do with uh, with the Ice Age and the formation of the lakes in particular, because it does seem that with those uh, glaciers on top of the state as long as they were, that much of this geologic history is easily explorable. Uh, exactly. We drive around on a relict glacial landscape. Uh, the great ice sheets uh, have moved back and forth over the state, left their scars on the landscape, and some rather dramatic changes uh, in the climate system are recorded right here in southeast Michigan, including the relatively sudden extinction of mammoths and mastodons in this region. And, of course, as you mentioned, natural resources are all influenced by particularly the Great Lakes. Well, you know, there is this perception out there, though, that Michigan is just some sort of flat pasture land. (laughs) Why why is that? Well, uh, because I think in a lot of the populated areas, there are large plains and such. But if you think about it, there are glacial lake plains, most of them. That's what uh, Wayne State is resting on. But if you uh, start to look around the state uh, in the... um, of uh, limestone quarries, we have a record beneath those glacial sediments of tropical seas and coral reefs from a time when Michigan was literally in the tropics. And if you get up into the Upper Peninsula, then it's a whole new ball game. I mean, uh, we have the lar- the most extensive crustal rift on Earth uh, exposed at the surface in the Keweenaw Peninsula. A crustal rift. Yes, uh, something like East Africa today where continents are being torn apart. This happened right in the middle of North America about a billion years ago. Uh, but you can walk across the ancient lava flows and the old lake beds uh, on a trip to the Keweenaw Peninsula. Wow, I have, I've been there and I never knew. Yes, and of course, uh, again, there's also a connection to natural resources. The world's most incredible deposits of pure copper were a result of many of those processes. And these are some of the things we explore in the DVD. Well, and we'll get into that in just a second. I should remind folks, my guest right now is John Zawiski. He's a geologist and paleontologist at the Cranbrook Institute of Science and also an adjunct professor here at Wayne State University. The new DVD, The Geology of Michigan, An Expedition Through Deep Time. Uh, As a geologist, uh, you know, when you have access to it. And again, maybe I'm getting this wrong, but it seems to me that a big part of what makes Michigan exciting to a geologist is, again, access to a lot of things that that might not be found in other places. You'd have to do a lot more digging, I'm guessing. Uh, It's true. Uh, You know, we probably have the most diverse assemblage of surface rocks right here in this area of any place on Earth. You mentioned the glaciers. You know, they originated in in Canada and rolled over some, some of the most ancient rocks on the planet bringing along with them rocks and boulders, recording all kinds of interesting firsts in Earth's history and depositing them right here. Well, you know, this is not the only place that this happened to. Why is Michigan so unique? Well, I would say uh, the confluence of uh, uh, the range of geologic history that's, uh, that's recorded here. If you go all the way to the western UP to Watersmeet, there are rocks there that are 3.6 to 3.7 billion years old. So uh, we've had everything from uh, Himalayan-sized mountains in this region to giant uh, continental rifts, tropical seas, ice ages. Uh, and some we share some of that geology with some of the neighboring states in this region. And, of course, uh, today, if we think about it, a lot of it is uh, the antecedent geology allowed the ice sheets to create 
these basins for 20% of the Earth's liquid fresh surface water. Well, John, I want to ask you, you mentioned, you know, go to the UP and it's a different ballgame entirely. This, these two pieces of land separated by, you know, five miles of water, uh, you cross the bridge and get into the UP and it looks remarkably different, exposed rock. Why is it so different from one piece of land to another, which are very close? Well, a couple of things happen. As we go uh, from the lower peninsula into the UP and territory to the north, that area has been rising relative to the area to the south as the ice sheets have melted back. The ice depressed that ground, and as it's melted, it's been rising several hundred meters. Still? Yeah, it's still rising today, yes. <laughs> I mean, what, what kind of pace are we talking about here? Uh, we're talking about uh, literally something like inch per, cent, per century. O- okay, but, but in that's, geologic time, is that pretty rapid? Well, that's pretty rapid. You extrapolate that into the future, and uh, uh, you're talking about fairly drastic changes, perhaps, in drainage patterns in the Great Lakes. You know, part of that rebound of the Earth's crust... Uh, helped create the current drainage patterns, but we've explored forests on the floors of Lake Huron from times when the lakes were 300 feet lower than today, uh, as little as uh, 7,000 years ago. And, and they still exist? Uh, these, these ancient forest beds are there. They're drowned forests. They're in the form of tree stumps and things now, but they're all radiocarbon dated around 7,000, 8,000 years. Oh, wow. So, so, you know, what's it like to discover something like that, to see something like that firsthand? Well, it's very exciting. I've spent a lot of time doing field work in exotic places, but uh, at this point, I don't think I'm ever going to leave the Great Lakes. <laughs> well, it seems like there's enough to keep you busy here for a long time. Oh, sure, for sure. Uh, you know, talk about the interest of this, because I said most people, you say geology, and they sort of glaze over, not understanding the significance of this or, or really the importance of it. Uh, you hope the DVD obviously sort of changes that perception for a lot of people. Uh, that's exactly right, and it comes from several perspectives. Number one, Uh, The DVD shot at 28 localities in Michigan and Canada. We have to include the Canadian part to really flesh the story out. Yeah, Rock doesn't know uh, national boundaries. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The other thing is, uh, of course, we're going to take you to some of the typical vacation spots uh, like Mackinac and Pictured Cliffs and places like this, uh, Sleeping Bear Dunes. This will give another dimension, perhaps, to the to the typical vacation but also it isn't just far away places uh we're we're going to places right here in southeast michigan like pontiac lake recreation area 1200 feet under detroit uh into quarries down in trenton and sibley quarry so we're really meshing this this history together uh uh, from a local perspective, too. Well, one of the other places you discover in this DV, and I want to talk about this because I have not been there. Many of us have been to Mackinac, obviously, and seen Arch Rock there and seen some of the geologic formations there. But I'm really intrigued by this island, Thunder Bay Island, uh, near Alpena. Tell me about this because I don't think I've, I've really thought about it before. Well, I have to say that uh, I've been all over the world. I've stood at the South Pole. And I, I have to say that the half day that I was dropped off on this deserted island, Thunder Bay Island, the half day I spent there was one of the more exciting ones I've ever had from a geological perspective. And why is that? Well, first of all, um, these limestone quarries that we have in this region, typically, uh, you know, the bedding planes of the layered rocks uh, are broken up and, and quarried. So we see cross sections of those rock layers, but rarely do we see extensive surfaces that we can walk over. And when I was dropped off on this island to do a little survey of the of the rocks there, I started walking around and I realized I was walking over an ancient coral sponge reef. Really? Giant sponges, uh, in some instances, two or three meters across, cross sections of them. The ice had flowed over this island and plucked up parts of rocks and made incredible slices. One of the more incredible outcrops I've ever seen. And we did extend some of our research underwater, too, and there is underwater film. Well, one would assume that if you see a coral reef that this then was some sort of a tropical area. Yes, exactly. And this was, of course, 385 million years ago because of plate tectonic movements Michigan was in the subtropical regions of the world. (laughs) And that's where the salt came from, basically, also. Which is sitting right underneath where we are right now. Exactly. Well, John, it's it's a fabulous project that you've got going on. The the new DVD is The Geology of Michigan, an expedition through deep time. Well, we certainly appreciate uh, you being on here to tell us about it. Uh, The history of this place is fascinating, especially when we start talking prehistory. Pretty cool stuff. Thank you.
And this is the Craig Folly Show on WDET Detroit, Wayne State's public radio station. Uh, just, you know, quick thing. I did that interview a couple of weeks ago. We meant to, uh, of course, air it then, but uh, elections and some other things sort of got in the way. Breaking news, as, as happens on occasion. But again, the DVD is available at Cranbrook, the Geology of Michigan. And uh, you may want to check it out. It's actually really, really well done and beautifully shot. Really well done.